Caleb's gonna love this editing, I just know it. <laughs>
in the laser here? Right, the laser is measuring the okay. X and the Y. It's a two okay. axis laser. And then it shoots it down that way where we saw it spooling, uh, where we'll see it spooling next. We'll Correct. Um, Correct. So, if, so if we look at this screen here, this tells us what your tolerance is and uh, in, it, real, in real time. Right, it's measuring um, five points a second. Oh, wow. So, so that's awesome. <laughs> That explains why it prints so good, right? Exactly. I don't have to change it in my dang slicer every five seconds. Right, right, right. Nice. Again, the, the uh, market tolerance is plus or minus 0.05. Uh, and like we, like I said before, we've advertised 0.03. Nice. Uh, so a little bit better than, than whatever anyone else is doing out there. And like you say, that, that shows in the, in the printouts. Right. At the end of the day. So. Cool. So... Uh, Basically, you're, you're looking at the winding process there where we're making uh, one spool at a time uh, and one of the empty spools is staged uh, and we, we focus on just one uh, filament line at a time for quality purposes. So. so what we're looking at now is the spooler, it's going down and rolling it in the spool, right? Correct. Then he's going to package it, he vacuum seals everyone with a desiccant uh, inside. All right, during this spool change, uh, Wesley is actually going to change it over into a big five pound spool. So we just got done with the little spool underneath and he did the change over. And now it's shooting up and he's just making sure it's all dialed in. So is there anything specific that he does while he's looking at it? Um, you know, not really. He's got an alarm set on, the, on his uh, diameter tolerances. so. Uh, if something's going wrong with the diameter, it, an alarm will sound and he'll pull that spool off and, and fix you gotcha. know, the, any, any of the run parameters. Um, other than that, basically, he had to reset the traverse uh, to a bigger spool now because oh. the, the one kilo spools are, are narrower. Gotcha. That's awesome. We're watching the spool actually, uh, or the filament load onto the spool here. And as you can see, it's really straight and uniform. So, as I watch, I imagine that that is part of the quality, right? Um, you know, not so much. It, it's not. Uh, it's not required. You know, the market doesn't really qu require a perfect wind on it because it, they don't always turn out like that. Sure. Right. And the 2.85 is a little bit um, stiffer, which uh, doesn't wind quite as perfect as the gotcha. 175 every time. Uh, and as you can see, our traverse is kind of bouncing along sure. on the back side of the spool. Um, so, I mean, it, it's, it's not an exact science by any means. Um, so, but I, I, it, it's never going to tangle. It's never going to cross because right. of the manufacturing process doesn't allow it to. Yeah, because I've definitely seen tangles in the middle of a print and then you're sunk in that print. So. Well, and, and sometimes it's because of how people loaded their machine. <laughs> or they it, let go of it when they opened it and it went all over the place. Right, and then they <laughs> crossed it underneath itself. and then Right, they, right so... So now he just weighed it on the scale, and then it looks like it gets a sticker. A label, serial number, the lot number. Oh. With the part number and so on. Correct. So the uh, sticker has, it's a lot number, a label, a serial number, and, and a number. part number. Okay. And then he puts it in a shrink wrap bag with the desiccant. And then I'm told we have to watch this one, because this is pretty awesome. So this is the shrink wrap, and there it goes, boom, and it's done. And that's what you end up with in the end. All right, so after it gets vacuum sealed, they grab a box and it gets boxed. And then the, what is that, the uh, seal so you know it's not broken? So it's fresh. So when he's done running them, they all look like that. So he stacks them up here. So it looks like you ran uh, about five different colors. And what are these? So those are our uh, changeover spool. Uh, so we call them mystery. So I basically go back to natural and to the next color. Oh, so cool. those are the those spools. So you never know what you're going to get here because they're changeover, right? They start yeah. in one color, mm -hmm. they go back to natural, yeah. and then to another color. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Some can be very pretty. Some are dull, but 
but that's the best part about mystery, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So right now we're looking at a whole wall, I believe, of the color resin, right? That's correct. Yeah. So what exactly, I mean, how does it work? Uh, how do you go about the process of picking it and the quality and all that? Right. So, so the the colors basically are by resin type. So, if I want a a, a blue uh, PLA and a blue ABS, a blue PETG, I've got to have a, a box of this colorant for each one of those resin types. Okay. Um, so, you can see a guy can spend a lot of money in a hurry to, to you know <laughs> offer several different colors because you have to have. You have to have a color, a box of this for each color or variant of color you want to do for each material that you print, right? That's correct, right. So, so the resins we use are, are basically always uh, prime virgin resins to start with on our standard materials. Um, and then we use the, the prime colorants as well. We don't add any other fillers or recycled materials or, or um, process aids or any additives uh, while we're doing the manufacturing process. That helps in our quality. quality. So are there, when you say you don't add anything, it's kind of like food. There's no other additives, right? <laughs> in, a, in a way to, to right. say that. So what you get out of this box is what you get. You don't add stuff to make it like more material or a different, right? We don't, you know. To, to make, we don't, we don't add anything to process it faster or to make it cheaper. Um, again, all, always using the, the prime virgin resin, uh, always from the same supplier, the same grade, the same, um, not obviously not the same lot uh, number, but we're always buying it from the same people right. at the same grade. And, and what you guys really care about here is the quality. It, it doesn't matter, uh, you don't search around for the cheapest quality. You guys found something you really liked and you just keep going we, back we for just, it. We just stay with that. And that's why our stuff's so consistent as well. Uh, it, it's real easy to do if you don't have any variables in, in the process. Right. Well, and I love, I love printing with it because it doesn't matter what color I've used so far. I can use the same temperature and the same settings on my slicer, and it's always going to print the same. And I like that a lot. I don't have to change <laughs> every time. Because right. some, you know, some colors you get on uh, different manufacturers, um, a red will print different than a black and, and stuff like that. And, and um, I think when I've used yours, I haven't had to do that yet. So that's awesome. Uh, that is that is good. And, and I've heard that same thing. Uh, one of the tougher colors to print is white. Uh, everybody talks about white all the time on all, all, the, all the postings and stuff out there. We went to work and, and we reformulated some of our white um, and, and got it a lot better now, a lot closer to, to printing like all the rest of the colors. So. so uh, with white being said, how hard is orange to make? Like a, a true orange, like your shirt orange. Piece of cake. Piece of cake? Nice. Yes. And I think I saw one on the shelf over there, actually. Yeah, I know. So. We, we've got Inferno orange nice. on the shelf, so. I always hear that's a really hard one to nail because it changes while you're printing. Oh. Um, like for a really tight orange like your shirt, I heard right. that was hard, but piece of cake, right? That's correct. <laughs> this is a... a PVC line, so they make uh, a PVC coils too, right? Right, for book binding industry. And the same process over here as what you saw on the 3D line, basically. And, and it's an extruder running two lines uh, through a water bath and then winding on the opposite end. So, so it's very similar. Almost, almost identical, except for you're using PVC the whole time. The colors probably don't change. And right. That's right. awesome. And this, you were saying, this is kind of how the business started with book binding. Right. Um, for those of you that don't know, he was actually explaining that we started with bookbinding here 25 years ago, right? Something Correct. like that. Yep. And, and um, Stratasys first got out with their first printer, I think. You know, <laughs> um, they were nice. they were just uh, making PVC wire. Nice. So they've been around for a long time, and and then you know they started making their own PVC coils here, and that's how this all kind of started. That's right. That's awesome. And this is really cool here. This is this is all automated. It's got a a whole tub of a PVC resin and it, it gets pulled up to the top. Um, you can't really see it right here, but it gets pulled up to the top and it's automatically just feeds itself through because yeah. then that's the only thing you run here is what you said. That's correct. Yeah, it's a awesome. dedicated line just for PVC. That's cool. So what we're looking at is the actual resin that gets uh, put in when we do the Inferno Orange right here. So they only mix about 4% of this to the hopper when they're going to make the Inferno Orange. 
which means this bag is gonna go a really long way. All right, so now what we're looking at is a whole stock of the film in here. So um, we're kind of just walked through. So what do you got here? It looks like you well, have... We've got everything from the standard PLA uh, to PTG to ABS, and then the prime and the pro grade in every one of those resins as well. Okay. Um, so what are we looking at here? Is this so ABS? This, and this is our section of 2.85 millimeter. Oh, 2 .5 I, I don't stock a whole lot of that. The, the tricky part is trying to figure out what um, Joe Public is going to buy next. Sure. Right? So basically, um, that's why I don't stock a whole lot of 2.85, but a whole lot more 1.75 because that's that's what the, is more popular. So we're looking at all the different variants pretty much in 2.85 here. Correct. And then if we come down this way a little bit. This um, is a 1.75 PETG. This is a 1.75 PETG, he said. Yep. And then if we keep coming to here, we're looking at PLA, PLA Prime. Okay. Is this small section with the PLA Pro right at the top. And that's a nucleated PLA. Um, basically, you can heat treat it after you're done printing, oh, okay. uh, which makes it a whole lot stronger. And there's nice. a very subtle difference in between our standard PLA and our PLA Prime. And obviously, I only stock uh, red, white, blue, and, and black in the PLA Prime. Right. And we were talking about that. It's because the quality of the standard PLA is so good, you don't have to stock a lot of that. Correct. That's awesome. Yep. So we're kind of looking at all of the PLA, um, the stuff that we would print on our printers, most of them, right, are all in this area. And that looks like your Inferno Orange, right? That's can right. I, can I take this down? Yeah, take that down. So I showed the uh, resin on this earlier, and it came, I think they said 4% mixture. Correct. Is that correct? So 4% mixture gave you this whole Inferno Orange color, which is awesome because at f only 4%, that's a pretty bright color. It is. I love that orange. You can also do it in the sparkle, uh, which I don't know if you looked or not on our website, but all the sparkle colors are basically, uh, again, no additives, no, no um, glitter or anything like that is added to this. Sparkle means it's translucent. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So, so all of our stuff on the website, if it's named sparkle, it just means it's translucent. Translucent, so okay. Basically, I use the same colorant, but only a fraction of a percent um, to to get the uh, to get the translucent, the translucent look. look. So it's not glitter. It's no. <laughs> it's not no. glitter. It's it's translucent. Right. So any of the sparkle that explains why I think I got the silver sparkle at home, mm -hmm. um, and and I printed with it, and I was like, I really thought this was going to be glitter the first time because it said sparkle, but it actually came out really cool. We did uh, um, some puzzles with it. Actually, right. it's a uh, like the puzzle boxes. You know, I like like my camera, Steve over here. He's like, yeah, I remember those. We did the bottoms of those in that sparkle. It's really cool. And and the thinner you print, like vase mode, uh, the more it will sparkle from the light oh. trend. You know, going well, through it. That explains why the vases I print are actually more sparkly. And I'll, I'm actually going to throw one of those in this. I'll take a picture or film it when I get home. I I made a, a like a 150 percent skull. And it's printed in vase mode. It's like a candy dish for Halloween. Right. And, you, you know, we put the candy in there and you could see through it. But it was really sparkly. Yep. Um, so when we're looking, you said the, the sparkle is like a translucent. And then you got your, your construction yellow. You have your um, the Green Bay Green. Green Bay Green. Green Bay Green. That's, Green Bay a, that's a popular one up here. Green Bay Yellow. And the Green Bay Yellow. There you go. Olive Drab Green is a real popular one with the military folks. Oh, good. That's the Olive Drab Green. And, and let's see, there's the cobalt blue. I love the cobalt blue, by the way. I, I did a whole, one of my Ender 3s is all printed in the, in the blue. <laughs> all the modifications. There's our new. Oh, there, there it the is. That's one. the new one. So this is um, hard to show you because I don't want to break the seal on this. But this is one of the brand new colors that came out this month, I believe, right? Correct. Right. And it's called Plum Purple. Plum Purple. So if you are a Dodge fan, a Chrysler fan, we'll call it, right? I think they had Plum Crazy on their Chryslers. This is actually called Plum Purple. And I'm going to actually put a picture of that in there now. And uh, we'll, we'll show you what that looks like. But um, I don't think I can get this close enough. That is a, that is a sweet color there. That's, that's my wife's newest color. She's, she asked me on the way up here, or right before I left, like, did you get the, the purple? I was like, uh, no. Oops. <laughs> so we might, we might have to do that. So then, as we come down... Um, so if you notice, too, the different spool sizes. Um, five pound, 15 pound, one kg spools is our normal size. If you want something else, 
definitely do it. I can fit 10 pounds of material on a five pound spool. And oh, I can nice. fit up to 23 pounds of material on a 15 pound spool. Oh, wow. So you could do up to 23 pounds on a big spool there. Correct. Um, but your normal size, your normal sizes are one, kg. One, one kilogram, five pounds, five pounds and, 15. and 15 pounds. Right. And if we uh, say you didn't have it on your website and we got a hold of you and said, hey, next time you run this color, could you do it in 15 pounds? Absolutely. You could do it. Oh, that's awesome. So that's what happens when you get a hometown 3D filament manufacturer. You call him up, you say, hey, I need 15 pounds of your brightest green, and he gets it for you. <laughs> so that's awesome. So the rest down here, this looks like ABS, is ABS. that correct? Yep, the whole rack on the end is ABS. Nice. So we kind of walk through all the filaments they have here, and uh, well, at least what they have in stock right now, and we kind of walk through how they manufacture it a little bit. Um, and not only that, but all the different resins that they use to manufacture it. Is there anything else we got to see while we're here? Think you think that's it? it? Do it. This place was awesome, I tell you what. All right, so we just walked through, we saw the manufacturing process, we saw all the sweet filaments you had on the wall, and uh, we saw the big spools, the little spools, uh, the resins that you mixed with that sweet Inferno Orange, that was awesome. Um, you know, thank you so much for having us, I appreciate it. Anything else you want to shoot out to the crowd? No, just thanks for being here, Jim. I really appreciate your time tonight, and uh, we hope everyone uh, gets to use Coex Filament. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Hey, everybody. If you liked the video, please click the like button. If you want to see more, click the subscribe button below. And as always, click that little bell if you want to be notified when the next great video comes out. You guys have a good one.